Okay, so now that we know where to find the information from, it's time to roll up our sleeves and it's time to actually go through the steps. These are basically my different steps, the different numbers which I quickly take a look at to find out if there's any red flag, if this business is worth taking it to the next level. So the first number which I look at always is does the business have any debt? My preference is for businesses with absolutely no debt or even if they do have some debt, it should be a very low debt. Now, a few days back, this friend brought this company, uh, Ebix Inc. to me and I never bothered to go into a detailed research of this company. I think they provide some e-commerce and cloud solutions uh, to you know, businesses in the insurance, financial and healthcare industry. But uh, the moment I took a look at their debt figures, you know, it was a easy pass for me. As you can see, and uh, you know, we, we typically start with the last column, which is the last uh, year for which the information is available. Now, as you can see, the total debt, which is the long term debt plus the short term debt together, it's almost seven hundred and thirty six million dollars as compared to just 478 million dollars of equity so even if I take into consideration the fact that they have about 178 million dollars of cash you know I find the debt to be too much for me any company where the debt is higher than the equity you know I don't want to even look at it now that companies which have debt I mean sometimes companies you know do use a little bit of debt to finance their business and that's not necessarily bad if it's within limits but for those companies it's very important for me to look at the interest cover now what is the interest cover interest cover tells me whether the company is earning enough to pay its interest expenses because you know whether the company is making money or not once you have debt on your balance sheet you're obligated to pay your interest right so so whether your sales are up or your sales are down the interest has to be paid so let's look at the example of this company high flags anyone from singapore would be familiar with this now there we know the sad story of many retired people who invested in the high flux bonds they were uh, perps, they were offering decent yields and many people fell in the trap without really analyzing the numbers and uh, you know the company is defaulting on their bonds. So people lost their life savings just because they were not curious enough or maybe they were not able to understand the financials of the business. Now it's very clear that the interest cover of high flux has been steadily coming down. Uh, it used to be around eight, nine times level in 2008, 2009. And from there, uh, right now it has come down to less than one. Now, even if this business came to me, this idea came to me five years back, you know, the writing was pretty much on the wall. It was not too difficult to see that the trend was downwards and I would have easily passed the business. So if we go and look at the actual income statement we see that the operating income in 2013 was 84 million dollars whereas the interest expense was 28 million dollars so you know still there was some cushion but it was not good enough for me and subsequently see what happened the operating income has come down to 12 million dollars so they are not not making nearly as much money as they need to pay as interest which is now 58 million dollars and this is 2017 in 2018 it's even worse i mean they are not making any profits but they have to pay interest of 71 million dollars so no wonder they have defaulted now having said that just because a company has a low interest cover it's risky but it doesn't mean that the company will eventually default on its bonds it's quite possible that the company you know gets its act together and uh, its business grows and uh, it turns itself around a good example is burlington stores burlington stores is an off price retailer in the us they have several hundred stores now just 
think for a moment if this idea came to me in say 2012 or 2011 i would have not even you know thought twice before saying a no you know it was a very easy pass just look at the interest cover it was very low now subsequently this company they actually turned themselves around and right now the interest cover is over 10 but you know it it doesn't matter there are hundreds and thousands of companies all around the world so i could not be sitting in 2012 and anticipating that hey you know what this company is going to turn around i mean there are people who do that and they do end up making a lot of money but that's not the game that i play i mean for me the clearly it was a risky situation and i do not want to be in this uh, business so for me it was a clear no even if that means losing a few good opportunities like for example burlington stores it would have done well for me if i invested in this business say in 2012 or 2013 but that's okay you know in the in the bigger scheme of things managing one's risk is more important and uh, that's why I would encourage you all to stick to the process.